Hi everyone. So today video tutorial is going to be about the new features that's been added in version 1821. Again, before uh, someone like James is going to comment that I'm not running the latest version. Yes, I'm running the latest alpha because I have access to that. But nevertheless, I just wanted to show you all the new things been added and I will do this one a little bit faster than the previous one because people commented saying it was a bit long. Okay, um, without further ado, uh, the first option, the, the first function that we've added and people were waiting for it for a really, really, really long time. It's called undo. So it's advanced undo. So first of all, to activate advanced undo, you have to press uh, setup. First of all, you need to update it to 1821, the beta version that's available. It's still in the beta, but it's still you can work with that. You press setup. Then you go to the programmer. And in the programmer, there is an undo mode. And at the moment, it says undo programmer. So it's a basic way. So if you double click it, and you choose undo programmer and actions now you will be able to undo actions as well so uh, at the moment uh, the magic queue will allow you to undo four steps in the programmer and after the four steps it will start to going through the actions like for example if you patch the wrong fixture you can uh, for example undo that action you if you parked it you can undo that if you deleted something you can do so anything like action wise setting name uh changing the menus uh, and doing like different things removing repatching moving copying all these things can now be undone but they the only things that you cannot undo is something relates to the file creation and file loading so the undo will start from the moment you loaded your show file or you started a new show file and it will end when you will uh, reload the show file or when you will shut down the software. So if you load show file, save show file, or do something else like relates to the file saving, these actions cannot be undone. But everything else should be able to undo. So how to work with this? Basically, here's an example. If you select your fixtures, press locate, uh, set a color, and press record, create a queue. Let's create a second queue, record that, another queue, so create the chase. We create another step, another one, press record, done, and now we can press clear. So first, uh, well, first of all, you have the undo button, which in the past people were complaining, say so you can only do the programming. So now, if you look and are pressing undo, you will see here it says three steps. So first of all, I'll press undo, it will go through four steps of the programmer, so which is correct. You press undo. And it tells you undone the recorded queue now. So you see now it has said that you have only now two steps in the program. You press undo again and undo. Now all the steps have been deleted. So if you want to redo it, you have to hold shift and press undo again to, to go through all the steps. Again, for those of you who are looking for the shortcut, it is there. So if you want to undo your steps, you hold control and press Z or in a, in a, on the Mac, you press uh, command Z and you can go through steps or uh, on the Mac it's it's uh, the the combination is actually command shift Z uh, on the on the Windows it's going to be control Y and you will be able to actually sorry you will be actually you will be able to redo all the steps back so the other window that we've added here for the undo history, if you hold control button and you press undo, you will be able to see your undo history and you can go back, again, control undo, and you will be able to go back and you will be able to scroll back through all the steps you've curated. But bear in mind, obviously, logically, if you went back to the step that says here, for example, step number 68. So that means after this step, you, you have the steps uh, 69, 70 and 71 that created queues. If you after step number 68, you decided to create something else, you press clear or some other actions, you will delete the, f the history of these three steps because from this point you're creating alternative history that means this where these three steps were not part of it so again be careful it works the same way as in the other software so again control z is uh, undo control uh, y is redo on the mac command z or command shift z to go back or if you don't remember all these combinations you can always go in the magic use file system in the edit you will be able to see uh, undo redo commands cool okay 
I hope you uh, you'll find it uh, useful, of course, because this is one of the functions that everyone's been adding for really, really long time. Okay. So the next one is the support of the find uh, function in the magic, which I was super happy to see because sometimes when people send you uh, a show file and they tell you, oh, by the way, use the group, uh, say, for example, they don't tell you the group number, they tell you the name of the group. And you're like, hold on a second, there's a hundred of groups. How am I going to find the, the group actually? Now it's, you, actually can, you can actually find anything within this window if you use the combination like on any other applications command f or control f so for example if i'm in a group window and i, I want to find a group with the name green even though i can see it here i can press command f in on the mac sorry i can press command f it brings me the search string and i'll type green and i press enter it'll find me quickly the group number green so then if you want to continue search again you'll have to control press control and and then you use the uh, the, the the buttons here like to the right so for example if you if you uh, if you press control and then press to the right you will be able to find the other group at the moment it says not found because it's the only one that had the name uh, green but if you find if you do for example control f and find all and you press enter it will find the group and then if you hold control press the the, the arrow button it will be able to find the next group with the name uh, all so it's a really nice and handy feature and you can find the same thing in any menu you want so if you go to the setup and you're in if, for example you're looking for the word no if you press say com control F, command f press no enter it will find the, the the next place where it says no it's really really super handy and it will i'm sure it will help you in your programming cool okay so uh the next function that ah, also yes the sorry i've just looked at my notes and i can just say that um yeah uh the the control commands are only working when you're running in the um uh, when you it's it's only running on the uh, on the PCs and Macs, it's not currently supported on the on the console unless you're using a keyboard that's connected to your console. Okay, so the next one is actually it's really also awesome thing, which is called we uh, it's a support for the copying and past pasting to the external applications via the clipboard, which was a really useful thing that I I really needed it. So for example. Um, if I open uh, if I open a Q stack uh, that has um, uh, if I open the Q stack that has say for example um, a time coded queues like for example I have the time coded show here with the two steps that has the time values and I want to copy and paste those time values from one queue to another what you can do is you can actually select them press command uh, command c uh, or control c on your keyboard and you can go to the excel spreadsheet for example you can select any uh, cells you press command v or uh, control v so you're going to paste it or you don't actually need to paste it anywhere let's all let's say you're trying to copy the timing from the uh, from the um from the uh, excel spreadsheet into the uh, into the magic queue you can actually select the timing press command uh, command c or control c go back to for example another queue stack that has a different timing you can select two steps and I press command V, you will be able to paste it actually. So which is a really cool thing. For example, if you want to say uh, the value of 25, you can copy it. And then for example, if you need to go to the patch window and in the view channels, you need to set the minimum value to be 25, you can select several of them. And for example, you can uh, tap uh, like one by one actually, you can tap 25% and you will be able to actually set the values uh, of the the ones that you've copied so it's obviously useful not just for the single value but when you're doing something uh in the uh in in say in the multiples and again the magic queue is very at the moment sensitive on how many cells you actually selected that many cells you can paste it on so as i said i made it here so if i selected only one uh one cell i can only pa pa paste it into the one cell so if i did if i actually did for example 25 25 25 
and I did four cells and I selected copy uh, command C command V and I selected four cells and I pasted it, it would work straight away so again be careful that the magic U, uh, does not like if you'll try to paste more cells into the smaller number uh, of the of the uh, of the cells because it may actually tell you like no you have to actually have even uh, exactly the same number or less in the magic queue. So this is another function. Of course, you can also use uh, in some of the menus, you can use the key combinations like Control A or Command A to select uh, all of them. And like, for example, if I want to copy all the values from here into my, um, uh, from this window into my um, uh, Excel spreadsheet, I can select one and press Control A. It was selected, press Command C, so I copied it. Then I can go to my uh, Excel spreadsheet and I can just press Command V and you will be able to patch all the values that you need into the into the Excel spreadsheet. And you can do exactly the same way, but vice versa from Excel spreadsheet back into the Magic Queue. Just make sure that it's always the amount of uh, cells always matching. And another function that we've added into the um, into this latest version is called color tags on the playbacks. So basically what it allows you to do is it will allow you to set the color tags like this into your onto your playbacks just to distinguish them from one from another especially when you're working on a lot of playbacks and you change the page so you can sort of mark them uh, with the correct color. So how to do this you have to go to the setup then you have to go to the uh, window and in the window it says here it says playback color tags it says none so you double click and you said q stack colors so when you do that you will be able to come to the q stack and for example triple click on your s button of your q stack go to the function in the function there's a color tag so you will double click it and for example set it as green so as soon as you do this, you will be able to see that you have a color tag of green. So if you want to say um, uh, another one to be another color, triple click again, color tag, and then say cyan. So also the good news for the MQ500 owners and uh, those ones who, who already have, say, Magic Q Stadium Wing, because the, um, uh, the LEDs, um, the LEDs that... Uh, the backlight LEDs under the, the playback numbers. So if you'll see it here, under the playback, you, you will have, and between the fader and between the, the flash button, there's going to be the playback number, and they are actually RGB um, LEDs. So if you set a color here, you will be able to see the, those colors on your, um, actually those, uh, on, on your numbers as well. So the numbers will become backlit. Again, of course, that's not, uh, it's not your regular LED wash that will give you like proper fully washed thing, but they are uh, RGB, so that means you can make it distinguishable. For example, some of them, like spots, you make all the cues to be in red. The, the washes will be in green, and others will be, say, in a standard blue color. So you will be able to easily uh, distinguish them. Again, it's a nice thing for the MQ500 and the Stadium Wing owners. So another one that we've added uh, is the, uh, is the uh, multiple gobos in the magic vis so for example if you select maverick mk2 wash and um, show that its fixture we po uh, we position it on the wall we for example fan it a little bit uh, so you can easily see it then if you go to the beam control and for example you set the the you set for example uh, give me a second you've set your uh, beams uh, so, for example, you've set your um, you've set your uh, beam uh, gobo one to be its on certain beam. Uh, like, yeah, you, you set your first gobo to be certain thing, and you want to see how it will look with the second gobo to be applied on the top of the first gobo. You can see it now. You can see now two gobos working side by side uh, in the in the new. Uh, addition to the magic vis. So again, uh, this is this is a nice step. This is a nice addition for those people who were who really wanted to see how the two gobos will look like uh, on the on the previous. And um, yeah, and I hope you will like it that you can now combine two gobos together.
Yeah, another function that's been added, uh, it's the ability to uh, edit the text using your cursor. So for example, um, if you have um, any queue here and we give the name here, let's say set the name, let it be test. And now if you want to edit, uh, edit it, so for example, if you double click it, you will see the name comes up here. And now you don't need to delete it if you want to put something in between the letters. You can use your cursor buttons here and, for example, on the keyboard, and you will be able to actually go through the text and put uh, added stuff whenever it's needed. So at the moment, it's working on the, the names, on the notes, and on the names of the, uh, of the palettes. And um, yeah, we hope you will like it. That is actually adding a bit more uh, uh, sort of, uh, it simplifies some of your uh, work when you're trying to edit it. And another thing that we've added as well into the, uh, into the faders, you can now go in a setup. And if you go to the playbacks, you have your um, cross split crossfade function. You can now assign it not to the stadium split, not to the uh, queues number nine and ten. You can actually assign it to the queue number playback number two or playback number two and three to do your ins and outs. If, for example, you prefer to use it like in a theater mode where the first queue is going to be your main queue stack and the uh, playbacks two and three, you want to use it for the crossfading. You can use it now starting from from this version. We also did some uh, bug fixes as well. But again, we're constantly developing the software and adding more stuff. So I hope this video was useful for you and you liked it. And please subscribe to our channel and uh, yeah, put the like on our uh, Facebook page. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye.